we don't work at the army. We are the army. We are in the army. Huge difference. Huge difference. So not to insult your intelligence, you all much better educated than me, most of you, probably all of you. There's some academic body of work and understanding of what it means to be in a profession, what, what a profession is. You've probably heard of uh, Samuel Huntington, for example, <clears throat> one of the classics, another guy named Janowitz, the, the you know, kind of founders of the thinking about the profession. I'm more of a, you, and you can, you can come to your own conclusion about what is and isn't a, pre, a profession. I'm kind of a purist. There's really only a few clergy, doctors, maybe lawyers, but definitely the professional military of Western democracies, indisputably, would fall in that category. And the body of work that, you know, so you need to understand the academic underpinning of everything, just like what we do. So there's really about four requirements to be a profession. One is expert knowledge. You gotta have an expertise around a compartmented area of study or area of knowledge. You gotta be self-regulating, right? Professions are self-regulating. Think about doctors, lawyers, the bar. We have that same approach in the military. Another requirement or another characteristic is, is this idea of, of public privilege. So think about the privilege that we're extended as members of the profession. Gigantic defense budgets, right? A little more subjective or deeper is think about this. In the right circumstances, we are extended the privilege of taking human life, right? There are times and places, got to do it the right way, but as members of a profession, we're allowed to take another human life. We're allowed to kill people, right? That's not something that, you know, you, most of you have been in combat. That's not something, even the, most, <laughs> even the most deserving people on the battlefield, that's still not something you want to take lightly, right? So that's kind of the purest academic definition of a profession that I want you to think about. Expert knowledge, self-regulating, extended privilege from the public, and it comes with a requirement to do good on behalf of that public. The earliest way to start this journey is that you're an aspiring member of the profession put young soldiers who enlist, commissioned officers, you know, think about those early days as a cadet or second lieutenant. I think everybody's at least a contributing member of the profession, right? Then you get to where it starts getting serious and you are a full 100% card carrying member of the profession. I would offer to you it may be earlier or not, we could talk about that, but it is absolutely the point in time you leave here. When you leave the Commander General Staff College, CGSOC, as a major, as a field grade officer, you are indisputably 100% full member of the profession. And that's important because as soon as you're a full card carrying member of the profession, guess what? You become a steward of the profession.